French armored division drives on Paris. This unit of the Allied Army of Invasion has been ordered to battle its way to the capital of France, which the Patriot population has risen against the Nazi garrison. Fierce fighting in Paris, and there are sharp clashes as the rescue force pushes on. Through burning towns, the armored division, filmed by the Army Signal Corps, approaches Paris, and at places on the road, there's many a hint of the welcome they'll receive in the city on the Seine, a foretaste of what they'll get in Paris. General Leclerc, commander of the French forces, on their way to liberate their country's capital. Paris, meanwhile, fighting in the streets, bullets flying. Forces of the French underground swarm against the Nazi and fight behind barricades as the Parisian masses have fought in many an insurrection. Patriot fighters blaze away at German troops and buildings. They're shooting everywhere. Children hurried across the street to safety, out of a bullet-swept area. Scenes of the Paris uprising, filmed by a French newsreel cameraman attached to the Patriot forces. Wounded French Negro of the underground fighters. In the streets, people seek shelter from the bullets. A German military car flees under fire. And there's a German soldier. They're shooting at him. With terrifying realism, this starkly dramatic motion picture film shows the death of a Nazi, killed by Patriot gunners. He's hit in the hail of bullets. A woman takes his gun. The insurrection of Paris against the German tyrant. As the Allied armies of invasion hurled back the Germans in northern France, Paris rose, directed by the French forces of the interior. There was an armistice, but it led to the premature report of Paris liberated. Then the armistice broke down and the battle was resumed. The city eagerly awaiting the Allied columns sent to the rescue, and it won't come any too soon. In an enclosure, French civilians, women and men, murdered by the Nazi. The kind of horror that roused the bitterest hatred. The barricade is opened, the relieving force is at hand. The barrier that had been used to stop the Germans is cleared for the entrance of the tanks of the French Armored Division. This part of the city is under Patriot control. The Germans cleared out. But in other parts, the battle is on in full fury, which makes the incoming motorized equipment all the more welcome. The great Cathedral of Notre Dame as the French Armored Division moves to complete the liberation of Paris. Paris with all its legends of romance, armored equipment on the Champs-Élysées with its famous rows of chestnut trees, and then the Place de la Concorde and the Arc de Triomphe, symbol of the glory of Paris. They push through streets for the final battle. French armored division with new American equipment it speedily crushes the remaining Nazi resistance in the city and the battle for Paris ends with the final turmoil of a series of clashes. Tanks for battering rams. The Germans surrender, the arrogant Nazi overlords who for four years kept the people crushed under a tyranny of brutality and killing. Now they are not so arrogant as they pass through crowds of people whom they ground under heel and who now make mock of them. The 
angry crowds have to be held back, and the insolent Nazis are not so insolent now. They're scared. This is the end of German pride and power in Paris. It began with the fall of France, and now amid the cheers of the people, the Nazi has fallen. Hitler and Goering, appropriately impaled on the points of bayonets. The Feast of Liberation, at the Paris Opera of long renown, and all through the city, the same sights and sounds. Paris hails the liberating allies, stars and stripes, and the flag of Canada. And everywhere is seen Mademoiselle of Gay Paris. Paris has known many a gala day, but seldom anything like this. If Mademoiselle is not tall enough, well, she gets a helping arm. capital of France liberated by its own people and by a French division, which adds pride to the joy, and the joy is unconfined. Vive la France, the shout rings from every throat, including that of Mademoiselle. Some read the paper jubilantly, and others, just as jubilantly, don't read the paper. Down the fashionable Champs-Élysées and the Canadian Army Film Unit pictures the arrival of General de Gaulle, head of the French Committee of National Liberation. De Gaulle, symbol of free France, and resurgent Paris cheers to the strains of the Marseillaise. 